Cool. All right. Well then let's get going. everybody. Welcome to National Library Week. We are so excited that you are here with us today to celebrate libraries overall, but really today a very special part of the St. Paul Public Library, the Bookmobile. My name is Beth Burns, and I am president of the Friends of the St. Paul Public Library. If you're on this Zoom with us today, you probably know about the Friends already, but just in case, I want to give you a bit of background. We are an organization that for 75 years has been powered by this community's love for its library. What we do is we raise funds from the community to help support library programs and services. We advocate at both the city hall and at the state capitol for the best interests of the library, both in terms of budget and in terms of policy. And then we ourselves run a number of programs, um, both locally and statewide. We're the home of the Minnesota Book Awards. We have a national consulting service that is called Library Strategies, and we are your state's chapter of the Library of Congress. We are Minnesota's Center for the Book. But again, today, we're going to the heart of work that we love to support, and that's right here in St. Paul at the St. Paul Public Library. And we're gonna be talking about the Bookmobile. To talk about the Bookmobile is to talk about one of the best partnerships we have with our community. And as I mentioned, we do raise funds to support that program as we do for so many programs. And I wanna recognize two of the corporations that have stepped forward and recognized the importance of the Bookmobile and have lent both financial and community support for this work. First, Health Partners. Health Partners has been a sponsor of the Bookmobile for nearly a decade now. In addition to providing funding that supports the Bookmobile through services and materials, um, they provide volunteers who show up at community events when the Bookmobile is going to um, be present. And if you see the Bookmobile around town and the vibrant colors and the beautiful wrap um, of artwork around that, Health Partners supported that work um, and commissioned local artist Julie Van Grohl um, to create what you see as the visual for the very beautiful bookmobile. This year, Verizon Foundation also joined um, the Friends in support of the bookmobile to really address some specific things that we've been dealing with over the past year related to digital equity and inclusion. Um, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi hotspots um, are so important right now, now more than ever. And Verizon really stepped up and stepped into this space, recognizing that the bookmobile is a powerful tool to bring digital equity across our city. In addition, they're supporting the distribution of STEM kits and so many other things that you're gonna hear about today um, in our discussion. But that discussion is what we're all here for. So let's get into this. Um, I have with me two St. Paul Public Library staff who are going to share some really fun insights and background on the St. Paul Public Library bookmobile. First, I wanna introduce Savitri Santharan. She is the Community Services Coordinator for the bookmobile. And Savitri, do you wanna say hi and give folks a little bit of information about yourself? Hello, my name is Savitri Santharan. I am a Community Services Coordinator and Bookmobile Manager at St. Paul Public Library. I've worked for the library for about 14 years now, and um, I've done you know, various positions across the organization. Um, and um, that's about what I can share. <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much. And we're also joined by Matt, whose tenure is not quite as long. Matt Metzdorf, a library associate with the Bookmobile. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? 
Yeah. Hi. Hi. My name's Matt Metzdorf. Uh, I am uh, from the Twin Cities, so I grew up around here. I got a degree from the U of M in English literature, but I ended up in a lot of youth work. I've been with the uh, St. Paul Library for six years now. I've run Homework Center, run Reading Together, the after school uh, reading program. And then I'm just finishing up my second week uh, as the children's specialist here on the Bookmobile. So still a lot to learn, um, but it's been very exciting and uh I'm just really looking forward to the summer. Yay. Well, I, I know I speak for so many people. We are so lucky as a community to have both of you um, as resources, not only on the bookmobile, but for the library system overall. Um, I know I, I always get a smile on my face when I'm driving around town. I live in St. Paul and the bookmobile boat goes by, but I don't really know always what's going on in the bookmobile. So let's start with, can you just tell us about a day in the life of the bookmobile, what it's like for you as a staff member? Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, talk a little bit about that just as a new person getting a fresh perspective. Um, so in the morning, generally, uh, we pretty much work in nine to five thirty, at least right now. Um, but in the morning, we get to the office, we clock in, uh, we check our emails and phone messages really quick. And uh, even more importantly, the weather report, mm -hmm. um, since we're driving out and about, we need to be prepared for whatever the uh, elements are going to throw at us. Um, then it's usually just kind of time to start packing up uh, the bookmobile for the day. So we put up, we put the holds that patrons uh, are going to have that day uh, on the bookmobile. We bring a bunch of crates for when people are going to return items. And uh, then we also print the pick list, which is the items that are on the bookmobile that might need to get sent to other libraries because people are waiting for them. So we'll grab all those things. We pack up and we go. Uh, so we'll go to our first route for the day. Uh, set up there, open up the bookmobile, and then deliver our holds um, and help patrons that want to browse for other materials. Um, if we're a little slow, then we're, it's time to catch up with the reshelving work and pull some of those holds that need to get sent out uh, to other libraries. Lots of things get checked out, so we got to constantly be moving mm -hmm. the collection, especially since there's kind of limited space on the bookmobile. Um, so we do that. We do our first stop. We pack up. We go to the next stop there's usually a couple that we hit at, at once um, and then we will go back to the office that's our time to uh, and we're office at Rondo Library so that's mm -hmm. our time to get our our lunch break in time to set up the delivery that we're getting uh, for any holds that are been coming in later in the week uh, and then more often than not we're going out on more routes so we go out again come back and pretty much have time to check our email and then we're 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 done for the day great thank you um i, I think i know that you guys go to 30 stops or more per week so give us a sense of where it is that the bookmobile goes where are your visits across the city okay yes so Yes, the Bookmobile visits 30 to 40 stops across St. Paul. Unbelievable. Um, and we usually follow a pattern of one stop every two weeks of, you know, of each site. Um, we stop at many uh, elementary and preschools um, and senior housing facilities, as well as St. Paul Public Housing Agency high-rises and a variety of neighborhoods in various parts of St. Paul, which may not have a library branch nearby. Um, and then new in 2020, uh, um, um, laundromats, we are going to two laundromats and a strip mall at Sibley Plaza. And our goal at these new stops is to provide services to people who may not have time to make a dedicated stop to the library branch or you know many people they do not know about um, library services and so to you know be out there and for higher visibility and to get the SPPL logo <laughs> and services to lots of people and then during the summer we participate in some festivals and um, parades. Great. Busy, busy. So you're out on your routes. Who do you see? Who do you meet? You mentioned little kids in preschool, seniors. Um, who is it that visits the bookmobile? We see exactly as you said, lots of children aged three to 12 
and lots of older adults who are usually 60 and over, my guess. Um, <laughs> and some at some places we do see, you know, whole families. So we're seeing, you know, everybody from zero to um, 80 or 90. Um, but uh, not not as many. So it's like the very young and the very old. <laughs> I bet over time that there are relationships that get built um, between library staff and those who probably really value and need the bookmobile as connection. Can you give me an example of a relationship that's been built through one of these bookmobile stops? Yes, this is a wonderful question um, because this is what makes, I think, the work not just on the bookmobile, but at the library, so wonderful is these relationships. Um, and so uh, I have two little stories. The first one is is a show and tell. I'm going to show you this. It's a um, oh. request list. It is a beautiful request list. Oh, um, we've been getting these for years. It's color coordinated. It's very detailed. Um, and it is from one of our teenage patrons um, who visits regularly at uh, the Ames Lake neighborhood stop. Um, so they give us the, this this envelope um, with the with their requests every week, uh, every week, every other week, and um, we do our very very best to. Uh, make sure that we can fulfill the holes and get those items to them. Um, but it's built like an opportunity to, you know, have conversations um, and, you know, hey, did you find this, that sort of thing, and building trust that mm -hmm. you know, they know that we are doing whatever we can to make sure that their needs are met. And it's not just this one patron, we get lots of lists from various people whom we see. Um, and it's also a great way for people to get what they want because our collection is not huge. So it's, you know, it meets the needs. Um, and then very quickly, I'll, I'll tell you about a second kind of relationship because we go to so many schools um, and, you know, last year it was all cut off really abruptly. Um, we did go to um, many neighborhoods uh, where we would see kids, we could see kids behind windows and you could tell that they were inside the buildings because like, curtains would be moving or sometimes they'd be waving at us from their windows. And um, it was always, you know, like we'd be waving at them, trying to get them to come out. And um, many times the kids, like after a few weeks of visits, would come out and uh, tell us things like, I told my mom, you know, my mom told me I couldn't come outside because um, it's not safe. Uh, but I told them that I know the bookmobile because they've been to my school and I know that it's free and it's safe and, you know, they have books and I'll be able to get something to read. Uh, and so to have them tell us that was just like, it's kind of magical because it, mm -hmm. it felt like it had come full circle, you know, like all those years that we had seen them at school. So yeah. uh, it's just, it is. A, such a powerful image to see these kids see something familiar in a time when their life is probably so disrupted. Thank you so much for sharing that story. So you've sort of opened the door to a question I, I have, and I suspect a lot of folks have. This last year has been nothing but disruption and change. How have you guys had to adapt your work with the Bookmobile to the changes in service model and all of that resulting from the pandemic? Yeah, so I wasn't around before the pandemic on the bookmobile, but I've seen what it looks like now, and um, it's it's a little bit different. Um, before COVID, we kind of pull up to a stop, um, unlock the door, put the step down so people can get on, and then people just walk on. They can grab their holds, they can browse for materials, and um, and then just leave when they're when they're ready to go. Talk with us for a little bit. Unfortunately, um, there's no way to social dis socially distance. Uh, on the bookmobile, there's just not a lot of space. Mm -hmm. um, so we haven't been able to invite the public on. Uh, so what we have is we got some lightweight fold out tables um, that we just keep on the on the bookmobile. We'll bring them out onto the curb for all of our stops. And then when patrons come up to the table, um, we can grab their holds and check them out for them then drop them off. That's in most cases what patrons are wanting, but we do have plenty of patrons that would like to browse for materials as well. So we just have some plastic bins mm -hmm. for, you know, if we know these patrons like to look at action and horror movies. We'll put out a bunch of action and horror movies, let them look at it. 
we'll take what they want and then check it out for them. And then with school visits, same thing. We'll put out tons of bins um, of children's materials to look at. And, uh, you know, we had a school visit earlier this week. We uh, brought a, and it was raining, but we, we went out. So we brought a 10 by 10 uh, tent with us and then put all the tables out with all the books. And then we had another table with a laptop uh, that we can set out there, take the, um, take the student's number and then uh, check the materials out right right there on the curb. Um, we're hoping that uh, we'll get to a level of public safety uh, in the next few months that we'll be able to welcome people back on. But right now we're just doing our best to um, provide all the services we offer uh, to uh, anyone at any of our stops. Well, I mean, it's just a statement of commitment. Wow. I've, I've, hauling tents around, it goes back to what you were saying at the beginning of checking weather reports and all of that. So um, really amazing work. And I've seen the kids outside sort of rifling through the bins uh, at, a, at a stop that's right across from my office. And you guys are doing amazing work in that regard. And as I think about you describing the service level that you're able to provide, even under such strange circumstances as we're in now, it really resonates to the mission and the vision and the values that the library has overall. Um, I know I was a part in 2018 of work that the library did to really uh, establish a new strategic vision and direction for the library. And I'm just going to read for a second um, a, a couple of statements that I think really resonate to what you're saying, but reflect specifically the mission of the library, which is to welcome all people to connect, learn, discover, and grow. And then I think about the values of the library, this, the ideas that the library believes that learning is a human right. You believe in curiosity, we believe in connection, and we believe in the power of belonging. And when I think about connection and belonging and that learning needs to still happen, even under these strange circumstances, um, your work just aligns with that and embodies it so clearly. So can you talk about how the Bookmobile really steps up to achieve the St. Paul Public Library vision and mission? Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about that. I'm just going to restate you. the mission in case mm -hmm. people missed it, which yeah, is that we you. invite all people to learn, connect, discover, and grow. And I think if you've been listening to kind of what a bookmobile interaction looks like, um, you'll probably agree that it's pretty pretty easy to see that we are um, inviting people uh, to learn, connect, discover, and grow. We It's our purpose to reach out uh, to underserved areas of the city where getting to a library might be difficult for someone, um, either because of transportation or um, just uh, distance, um, you know, how far they are from a library. Um, so being able to go and visit these people where they live uh, or close to where they live, uh, I think is a really important way to get people to connect. Um, something, and, and then we've also been talking about school visits. Um, something that's not so obvious maybe to people is uh, on these school visits, this might be the only time that uh, the kids there um, will interact with the St. Paul Public Library. Um, mm -hmm. Many of these kids might not be going um, to a library regularly with their families or friends. Um, so that we have that one chance when we come every two weeks to their school uh, to make that connection and get them excited about reading and learning. Um, I actually wanted to share a quick story. I uh, accepted this job about a month ago. And the day that I did, I um, called my or talked to my best friend who lives in Japan now um, to tell to tell her. And she was so excited. And then she was like, I used to go to the bookmobile as a kid. And, um, and then later in the day, she thanked me because um, she said, oh, it just brought back so many memories and I've been feeling good all day. And I, I think for a lot of kids, that, that is what um, the bookmobile is all about. It makes them feel really valued and really mm -hmm. seen um, mm -hmm. by the community and by the library. And um, you, you never know when we're gonna make that big impact um, on a child, even if it's just that little five minute school, you know, 15 minute school visit. Right. That's amazing. Um, it looks like Savitri, we've lost her for a moment here, but oh, and she's already coming back. Okay, we're back. You might notice some of your visuals have changed. Um, and this is just how we adapt and respond in a very strange year. Um, we were having a little bit of connectivity issue on the bookmobile, which is where Savitri's location was for the first part of this interview. 
but she has moved back inside uh, Rondo Library, which is the hub, the home for the bookmobile. And we're going to continue our conversation here. And I um, just want to express appreciation for COVID protocols being followed. And so hello to the masks, um, but still grateful to continue the conversation. So thank you. I'm so appreciative of the, the many stories that you guys are sharing today, but I also know the data matters. Savitri, I'm wondering, um, can you share some data points about the bookmobile that will help those of us who are with you today on this program understand impact a little bit better? I guess I'm thinking about the library's summer learning program, um, which is called Summer Spark, and how important the bookmobile is, is to that program or any other program that you might want to speak to. In 2019, the bookmobile contributed to 22% of the total participants in the Summer Spark program. Wow. In 2020, out of um, 7,400 um, free kids books that were handed out, the bookmobile gave out slightly under 50% of these books. Mm. And we also um, handed out um, over a thousand take and make activity kits for children and teens. Wow. I mean, just impact. That's amazing. So thank you. Um, you guys have to get out on that bookmobile this morning, and I'm grateful it's not raining right now. But to wrap <laughs> up, I'd love to hear a story or just a little bit of behind the scenes anecdote um, about the bookmobile, something that might surprise us. What is something that we who are library patrons and bookmobile visitors that we never see? So this may not be surprising, um, but um, I think it's interesting. I like to um, remind myself and other people that the bookmobile goes to people's homes and communities. Uh, we are at their building entrances and we are at their doorsteps. And this proximity to people's personal lives allows us to build those sort of special connections um, and very strong ties um, because I think a certain amount of trust is built up with that, um, you know, with that time there. Um, and I think uh, because of repeated positive interactions, uh, the bookmobile is thought of as a friendly government service. So people, you know, many, many people uh, will tell us um, details about their lives, like, oh, you know, the HUD inspector is coming and I'm really nervous uh, because I need to pass this inspection. Or at school, maybe a child might say, man, my mom's car broke down and I got to school late today. And you know, then we didn't get my lunch and all these details about people's lives. Um, and it's, it's just, a, you know, I feel like it's a testimony of their trust in us that their belief that uh, we are a safe, place that um, they, they, where they feel like they can be seen and heard. And um, it's, it's, you know, the slogan, we're here for you. It's taken to almost a higher level. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. So it's, it's um, you know, I have lots of like random things, but I feel like this one is, is very important is. to our work, yeah. our daily work. Absolutely. Well, I, I cannot thank you enough for your time. I think one thing folks are going to want to know after hearing this conversation is if someone wants to visit the bookmobile and, and meet you guys, interact safely outside for now um, at these tables and, and rifling through the bins and talking with staff, where will people find information about when and where the bookmobile will be near them? How do we do that? So we, we try our best to have the schedule for both the current and the next month um, available at the bookmobile. Um, so if you already know where we are, you can grab one there. Um, but also on the website, we have try to have those updated as quickly as possible. Uh, because of the pandemic, there have been more changes to our schedule than we would normally have. Um, but we try as much as possible to keep our schedule up to date and be where we promise to be at the time we promise to be there. Right. Um, you can also call us. Our uh, office phone number is 651 266 
1-800-273-7450. Or you can call any of the St. Paul Public Library locations when they are open and staff will be glad to tell you uh, more about when and where we stop. And if you see us st stop somewhere in the city, just uh, by chance, um, you're welcome to come visit us and say hello wherever we wherever we do stop. Great. Oh, wonderful. And for folks who are curious, the library's website to look up that schedule is SPPL, St. Paul Public Library, SPPL.org. So wonderful. Oh my goodness. The work you guys do is so inspiring. It powers the work of the friends. This is why we exist, why we're doing what we're doing. And it is, it's really an honor to support you in your work. Um, I think we're going to look at some images, uh, a little bit of a tour of the bookmobile in, in some regard to sort of see what the bookmobile looks like. Um, and then following that, I'll come back and say a few goodbyes. Well, I know that everyone shares my gratitude, Matt Matsdorf, Savitri Santharan. Thank you for spending time with us today and helping us understand more about the work of the Bookmobile. We're grateful to Health Partners and the Verizon Foundation for their continued support. And I just, I think I understand now more than ever how much the Bookmobile in particular really does embody the mission and vision of the library overall and how critically important it is right now that the bookmobile persists and is out there in the community meeting people where they are um, and taking away one barrier for them um, to connection and interaction and learning and inspiration and growth. So what a great highlight of National Library Week. Um, thank you so much to both of you and look forward to seeing you out on the road and across the streets in St. Paul. So have a great day and thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thanks thank to you. everyone who tuned in. We're so glad for your interest and your support for joining us today. Um, really hope that if you have questions about the library areas you'd like to learn more about in future programs, let us know. We're at info at the and we'd love to hear from you. So thanks so much. Everybody take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.